And we're going to go through the steps to develop your thesis statements because once you have a thesis statement, you're going to have a roadmap of where your paper is going. Your thesis statement is the main idea. So this little PowerPoint is going to walk you through the thesis statement, but I really want you to hone in a more on the brainstorming cluster chart because that's going to be your homework tonight. Okay, but I'm still going to walk you through the whole process. So. Uh, the thesis statement, what, where, and how. We're going to quickly define the thesis statement. Uh, let's have Tommy yes. read us the definition of a thesis statement. A sentence that reveals the main point of an essay usually written in one sentence. Okay, so I think you all have come across a thesis statement before. You're in English 122, so it's nothing new to you. I did want to uh, mention, and that's why I put it in the definition here on the slide, that it's usually written in one sentence. Some teachers say if it's over one sentence, it's no good. You have to revise it and make it fit into one sentence. I've had students, especially since you're writing a more lengthy research paper, combine together two sentences with a semicolon. Okay? And that's okay. I'm fine with that. But if down the road you're writing a paper for another teacher, you might want to clarify for them. So thesis statement is the main point of your essay. I'm going to go over really quickly some yays and some nays in your thesis statement. So first of all, um, a thesis statement, if you look on the little right hand column, you have a happy face, which, which means yay. So a thesis statement is a statement of the main idea of your paper. We already talked about that, that's in the definition. What it is not is on the right. Look over on the nay column, it's got the little no-go guy right here. It is not a question, okay? Do not Phrase your thesis statement in the form of a question. The whole word statement implies that it's not a question, so don't write it as a question. Always write it in the form of a statement, so nay to that. Over here on the, right, on the left again, your thesis statement should also indicate the purpose of your essay. And what that means is, if you read a person's thesis, you should have an idea of what kind of an essay they're writing. Are they writing a cause and effect? Are they writing a compare and contrast? Are they writing an informative essay, which is what you're doing? Are they writing a persuasive essay? And you can tell in the wording kind of what the point is. If they say something, like your thesis statement for your persuasive speech, um, people should, should own guns to protect themselves. That clearly is kind of showing the purpose it's a, to persuade. So in your thesis statement, you should have an indicator at least of the purpose of the essay. So that's a yay. And then on the right-hand side, number two, we have a nay. Don't blatantly tell the readers why you're writing the essay. So in your thesis, you don't want to say something like, this essay is going to show the causes and effects of smoking. Don't say this essay is going to do anything. Just create a sentence that doesn't draw attention to, hey, I am a person and I am writing an essay. Just state what you need to say. S say what you need to say. Number three on the left, another yay. The thesis statement can have an overview of your main points. Have any of you ever written a thesis statement that says something like um, some of the causes of cigarette smoking are A and some of the effects are B and C? So you kind of like list out all the main points that you're going to talk about in your essay. So your thesis statement should do that. Sometimes you'll be more general or broad and then, why does this keep showing up? Sometimes you'll be more general and broad and then sometimes you'll really like identify each and every point you're going to talk about and it's kind of up to you but it should have an overview of the main points on the right hand side right here number three the nay would be giving details on the main points so you'll list or articulate the main points you're going to talk about in your essay but you're not going to go into all the details on it save that for the essay and that's kind of a given but just so you so you're all with me um, number four, back to the left side, the yay column. Melissa, why don't you read number four for us? Introductory. So this is the placement, where your thesis statement goes. Okay, it goes at the end of the introduction section, if it's more than one paragraph, or the end of the introduction paragraph. And the reason is, because how many of you in the past have been told, to put your thesis statement as the first sentence of your essay. I always get at least one or two people who say, I've always been told that my first sentence of my essay should be my thesis statement. Um, and that doesn't really make for a very exciting read for some people because 
even though your thesis statement is really, really important, it's not like the most exciting thing that you're going to say in your essay. It's it's the most imp like probably the most important thing you're going to say or one of, but it's not going to draw on your readers. You want to start first. You want to start with a what? What's the first thing you do in your essay? First thing you write in your essay. Think about your speeches. What was the first thing you did in your speeches? Oh, attention, getter. attention getter. You want to first get your audience's attention. Then you want to introduce them to or like acclimate them to or let them know a little bit about the topic. Before you go into your main point, you want to just warm them up to it. So don't put your thesis statement as a first sentence. I know you already should know that, but it's worth mentioning. And so don't, this is an A, but we've already covered that, number four on the right. So bring it back to the last yay in your thesis statement. Um, it should imply an attitude or opinion about the topic when it's appropriate. So if it's a persuasive speech, your opinion or your attitude should be implied in there. So yay to that. And then if you look on the right, number five on the nay, don't use I statements, though, to express your feelings. So you wouldn't want to say uh, gun control. You wouldn't want to say, I think that gun control laws should be removed from all state laws. You would say gun control laws should be removed. You don't need to say I think. If you're the author, we know it's what you think because you're the author of the paper. So nay to I statements. Okay, so those are some yays and some nays. And this is what I really want you to take away for tonight because this is going to be what you're doing tonight for homework. So how to begin brainstorming before you can even go about writing a thesis statement. So you know your topic, so you'll make a little cluster chart. Okay, and I would even colorize it. it for me, that helps, um, but it's up to you. Just you'll want to do this tonight, and I want you to have at least five little circles outside of your topic. So for my example, I did yoga. Tried to stick with something that you know a little bit about and you know I care about. And uh, for you, you'll put your topic in the middle. Just keep it generic, okay? And what I did was I researched all the different things I can find out about yoga. So one of the things I can do research on is the history of yoga. I can even go further and look at the religious origins of yoga, like Hinduism. Or I can just look at how it's recently emerged into popular culture. Those are both looking at historical aspects of yoga, though. So that's one direction I can go in my research. I can look at the different types of yoga. And in, I, in my research, I found that in the US, I'm sure there are more, but there are five major types of yoga. You can, you can find studios with which you can practice. One is Hatha Yoga, one is Vinyasa Yoga, Ashtanga, Bikram, which you learned about earlier, and this one I've never heard of, Iyengar, but would be interesting and worth doing research on. So I can do research on the different types of yoga. I can do research on the benefits of yoga, so what are the physical benefits, what are the emotional benefits, and what are the spiritual benefits. So you see, you can kind of keep on branching, too. I can even branch off from these, too. Maybe I want to do research on what it takes for a person to become a certified yoga instructor. So I'm a business student, and I'm thinking about things like that. So that can be another direction I can go in. Maybe I want to compare um, yoga to other methods of physical fitness. So why would... It was a really good question that Joanna asked me last week. Like, why do yoga not... Pilates, right? So maybe I'd want to research that a little bit more. Like, what makes yoga a better form of physical fitness than other methods like running, Pilates, cycling, whatever. Another thing I can do is look up and do some research. Maybe I was inspired by Candace's speech on how to open up a yoga franchise. I know, for example, there's a studio called Core Power, and they have franchises all over the United States, and they're owned by people who are passionate and have a desire to start their own business. So maybe I want to do my research on that. I can look into licensing. I can look into a market analysis and see, like, do we even need a, yoga, a core power yoga studio in Temecula or wherever you live? And then obviously, you'll want to look into the cost. So see that there are so many different roads that you can go down in conducting your research. So I'm going to, before we go, I'm going to leave you with a couple example thesis statements so you can see how like all these ideas can kind of come together into a statement that can put together an essay that's well developed. So 
the first thing, what we're going to do tomorrow when you come in is we're going to look at all the different topics that you have thought about for your research and maybe you even have to do more research to fill in more bubbles. And um, then you'll want to look at like what goes together and kind of what doesn't. So I probably wouldn't, I probably would have a really hard time writing a paper on both how to open a yoga franchise and writing about all the benefits of it given the length of the paper you're writing for this class. That would be a lot and they don't they don't go together as well as some of the other topics. So you want to kind of pick what goes together. So I have two different types of papers I can write. They're both going to be informative um, on yoga, given all the stuff that I can do with, with the brainstorm I have. So maybe I want to write a paper on the history of yoga, the types of yoga, and the benefits of yoga. And those all kind of mesh together. It's an informative essay. So if I were writing a thesis statement for that, this could work. Long, but it's one sentence. So, uh, while its origins date back thousands of years, today yoga has become mainstream with studios offering many types of practice, which have all proven to improve the physical, emotional, and spiritual health of a person who practices regularly. You can see all three of these guys being represented in the thesis here. So the part where it says dating back thousands of years represents history. The part where it says types represents types. And then the benefits, you can see it's um, represented here towards the end of the sentence. So, and it's not perfect. I actually just realized I forgot my Oxford comma. Should have a comma right here. And your thesis won't be perfect the first time you write it either. So that's one example of a thesis statement that would work for these topics. I have a second example. So let's say I go down a different road for my research and I want to do it on how to get a teaching certificate in yoga and how to start my own franchise. Those seem to be like better to categorize together into one paper. It makes more sense. So here could be a potential thesis statement. A career in yoga can be both promising and rewarding with many opportunities such as earning a teaching certificate and also investing in opening one's own franchise. So you can see that subtopic one is represented teaching certificate, and then subtopic two is represented the teaching franchise. Okay? So you're not going to be required to have a thesis statement when you come in tomorrow, but you will need to have just a paper full of all the different roads you can go down in your research by conducting brainstorming, more brainstorming, more research, and making a cluster map. So that's what you're going to want to come in with tomorrow. I do want to leave you with a couple final thoughts on the thesis statement um, that you can apply tomorrow when we start making it, which is if your paper heads in a different direction, maybe you can just modify your thesis statement. So if you write a thesis statement and you find you're finding more information in a subtopic you didn't indicate in your thesis, but it's really in interesting to you, go down that road and we'll fix the thesis statement. Don't tailor or force a paper to fit the thesis if it doesn't work out for you in the long run. It's easier to change the thesis statement. Um, number two is don't expect to nail a perfect thesis on the first shot. It takes many revisions, okay? and we'll work on that tomorrow. So with that, I know I kept you an extra minute